welcome to the region. I am Ngobile Makamu. And I am Ta Toba Holo Mangwadi. These are your top stories for today. Rhodes University introduces mandatory vaccine policy. How far does consent go? University students share their thoughts. Lack of service delivery in Makanda townships leads to illegal dump sites. Rhodes University's second term has just begun, but many students have not returned. The reason? They have failed to provide a vaccination certificate. To protect students from the daily virus, Rhodes University saw it fit to introduce the mandatory vaccine to be able to have students come back on campus. Not all students were happy about the decision. Some students felt obligated to take the vaccine to continue with their studies, and some felt resilient on their brave decision not to take the vaccine, even if it meant academic exclusion. It has been two full years since COVID-19 has disrupted the academic experience of students all over the country. Universities have tried to adapt to the use of mandatory vaccines to make sure students come back on campus. Rhodes University is one of the universities who have incorporated the mandatory vaccine within their policy. However, some of the students seem to be reluctant towards taking the vaccine due to personal reasons and have therefore gone against their personal beliefs. Unfortunately, rejecting the vaccine at Rhodes University can lead to an academic exclusion. Some students felt obligated to take the vaccine in order to continue pursuing their studies. Mercedes Lowe is one of these students. The Rhodes University SRC told us that they are bound to support the university's vaccine policy. We asked them if they think it's fair to have students excluded. The 2021 SRC um, supported a university council decision. So it's a vaccine mandate, meaning that it stays until they say otherwise. Um, in essence, how that affects us, we are for the students. So that's what we are saying. We are for the students, meaning that we, you know, if you want to vaccinate, you'll vaccinate and we support you. If you choose to exempt yourself from vaccination for whatever the reason may be, then we support you too. Sanele Gumbi is one of the students who were excluded due to the failure of being able to provide a vaccination certificate that they declined it, though so they say they declined it. Firstly, it was the fact that they told me that they cannot reasonably accommodate me as an unvaccinated student. Fanele Gumbi was a third year student at Rhodes University and is now awaiting her appeal response. She is at home studying online classes and does not know what it holds for her future. Mobile Makamu, Rhodes University. The Makana municipality has consistently failed on providing Makanda township residents with proper service delivery. Residents are complaining about how the garbage trucks failed to collect garbage, which has led to illegal dump sites in the community, causing health hazards. What is the municipality doing about this? Sipo said to bring us more on the story. The town of Makanda has been experiencing issues related to their refuse not being collected by the local municipality. This has opened a way for the creation of illegal dumping sites in the location. Once a week in Makanda, a garbage removal truck collects trash. Residents of Makanda are expected to put out their trash in disposable plastic bags on the day of rubbish collection in the mornings. All residents are advised to place the rubbish one or two meters above the ground to avoid animals tearing and eating from the trash. When accidents happen whereby animals tear trash bags, waste workers are expected to clean it up before moving to the next household. But that's not always the case. This creates a dirty environment and leaves residents in panic. Residents of Makanda also claim that there are days that the garbage removal truck doesn't collect trash, leaving them with no choice but to illegally dump waste. Residents of the location have raised complaints and concerns regarding the state of these illegal dumping sites. They are calling on the municipality to hear their grievances and put an end to these harsh living conditions. <laughs> This dump site is detrimental to our health as it is smuddy. Dead dogs are dumped here and during rainy weather the condition worsens.
we have a request that we would like to ask you from the municipality. Uh, well, we understand that maybe they don't, they don't have means to come and clean the dump site like every now and then. So as the artists in Talani, we are more than willing to clean them up. Only if the municipality could maybe supply us with machinery, equipment, because we would like to change the dump sites and development and develop them maybe to become uh, gardens, even parks as well. We do have challenges sometimes that our trucks can reach uh, some collection days. But other than that, we're collecting five days a week. Even on Shalani, Lingelese, informal settlement, we do collect even uh, those areas here. There's no area that we do not collect here. The people of Makanda have spoken out with hope that the local municipality will take all necessary steps to better these harsh living conditions. The municipality has agreed to work with the residents. We can only hope for improvement moving forward. I am Sipose Tufin, Emma Khan. Could the high stats of rape in South Africa be due to the lack of education about consent? Maybe it is time we understood that there are no blurred lines when it comes to consent. No means no. However, it seems as though a lot of university students are still uneducated about consent. Let us take a deep dive into the story with OA2 Mabaso. In 2016, the RU reference list was exposed and students took to the streets to fight at Rhodes University. But what has changed since then? Many have different views about what consent is. But what do Rhodes University students happen to believe? I think of like, um, I think um, sexual relations, but then I think it exists outside like sexual activities. So like in friendships, um, you need consent, it's a, it's a very good way to set boundaries. So um, even as friends, like can I hold your hand? Um, can I sit? Yeah, like you know what I mean? It's a, it's a very good way of um, setting boundaries in any space, platonic, romantic, etc. The first thing that comes to my mind is actual and positive permission for any type of interaction with any person on any level. Yeah, and it needs to be vocal. With rising cases of sexual assault going on at Rhodes University, we tried to contact the Anti-Harassment and Healthcare Centre. However, our requests were denied multiple times. We tried to get insight on what was going on. The release of the RU reference list in 2016 at Rhodes University had sparked protest against the handling of sexual violence. Stats suggest that 8.2% of women on campus have reported their cases to police, according to Stats SA. We have gained knowledge that students have continued to report to the anti-harassment and healthcare department when it comes to sexual violence. However, nothing has changed. We decided to go to the sources themselves, the whole representatives of Hugh Masikela Hall and Courtney Latimore, Heidi Botcher and Sia. We spoke to them about what exactly are they talking to Rezes about when it comes to consent. But uh, what I know is, you know, um, according to the um, DSA, uh, Rezes were supposed to, you know, to have uh, consent talks as early as the first term. But yeah, I am not sure as to, you know, whether they have had those, uh, you know, consent talks. But what I know is that in my hall, though, you know, we are preparing for one. Um, so far we've had one um, this year. And I think we should probably have one per term, seeing as some people can't make it or it's an awkward time for some people. So I think one a term is appropriate. Our hall reps have stated that there is consent talks happening. So the question remains, why is there a rise in cases? I don't think they are well attended, well, as far as I have noticed. Um, and talking can only get someone so far. I mean, it also has to do with, like, people's backgrounds, how they were raised, like, alcohol abuse. There's so much, there's so many factors that have to do with sexual assault. The concern talks, we do not become... Uh too practical when we are like um, talking about uh, these things. Sometimes, you know, um, sometimes, you know, people need, um, 
you know, uh, to be taken through some, you know, um, kind of practical, um, you know, um, examples and stuff. So the question remains, does Rhodes University care about sexual assault? The question remains, do students at Rhodes University understand consent? A state of disaster has been declared in KZN due to the infinite amount of floods across the province. It is expected that more rain will pour in the upcoming weeks. Many people in the province have been affected. At least 448 people have confirmed dead. Let us look at some of the tweets concerning the recent floods. Avika tweeted, In the span of 24 hours, I've lost two people in KZN due to the rain and flooding. Please be safe. Sia tweeted, Good morning, South Africa, and let us continue praying for KZN. Missindor underscore WA tweeted, My morning prayer goes to our family and friends in KZN. Psalm chapter 91, verse 1 to 2. Are you wondering how black he was able to fill up rustic route? Stay tuned as Mobile speaks to the event organizers who made it all happen. We bring you more after the break. One of South Africa's hottest acts, Blackie, filled rustic roots on the 1st of April. Kasaro event owners Zizu Mrejane, Bongani Pelemu and Pagamile Mubezulu join us today to speak about how all of that came together. They didn't start this year. We've been trying to bring this guy for six months. We've had our troubles going through a lot of trials and tribulations, but eventually this year something, as soon as we got that Kasaro event on us, beginning of the year, first artist in Grahamstown is black. Yeah, it was a process, but at the end of the day, it worked, and it worked out for the best, so yeah. Considering the area and the target market, what are the challenges that you guys faced in terms of bringing such a big artist? Some of the main challenges mainly is resources. Um, the fact that Grahamstown is a very inland place, and also having to cater to a very, very small market that can be volatile at any time. So it takes a lot of risk because of the type of resources that you have to invest into that. And also understanding the, 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 the mental impacts and what you have to sacrifice academically in terms of time to try and execute a concept over time for one night you don't know how the weather's going to be. There's so many factors that play into all the effort that you're going to put in. And it's almost like you, you no matter how much confidence you have, you're still gambling. Mm -hmm. So all of those variables play in at the same time, just the distance, the cost, um, lack of resources in certain aspects. So those challenges are things that you kind of have to find your way around and, and, and just adapt and innovate and find a way to get the job done regardless as you guys are about to graduate quite soon is there like a type of um you know legacy that you guys would leave, would like to leave when you leave Grahamstown? um one thing i can say there is a legacy already from what he's done so far and one of us is a graduate already um so you know how Grahamstown is it's a club and a club and a club we're students here and yet we've done more than some clubs have done here mm -hmm. so just from the blueprint we've already set out the next person who will step in has a lot has big shoes to fill already yes but by the time we get here we want to say that nobody can do what we've done here in Grahamstown ever and i mean if anyone wants to consult with kasaro events they are available we will put their um, social media handles just at the bottom so you guys can be able um, to get a hold of them at any time. Thank you so much for joining us. It was lovely having you. That's Kasari Events. Thank you. There's been a debate in the past about whether dance should be considered as a sport or not. Well, the Rhodes University Hip Hop Club believes so. That dance is a sport indeed. They take us into the world of dance and passion that they have for hip hop. What qualifies something as a sport? Is it strength, hard work, dedication, sacrifice? Well, if so, hip hop does check all those criteria. And while many may assume it's not a sport, these Rhodes University students state otherwise. 
Hip hop coach Cameron Edwards tells us about their recent exciting performances. We got an invite from Sports Edmund. They wanted us to perform at the, the opening games for Varsity Shield. We did that and then they, they loved the performance, so they approached us again. They asked us if we would like to perform again, but this time they would live stream it on Supersport, so they wanted us to perform for a live game, actually, and we did that. The experience, how was it? It was awesome. It was so much fun. I enjoyed every moment of it. He also explains how he makes students reach their full potential in the dance club. What I do is I break down my routines step by step. Okay, so each step, actually, I break it down into smaller steps so that they can catch the choreo, actually catch the moves. After that, I make them go over the routine several times just to build some muscle memory and get them to be comfortable with the moves. Diversity, one of the key characteristics of hip hop. Competitive dancer Mia embodies this element through her interpretation of hip hop, which does not conform to normal standards, but creates its own. I feel like um, con the concept of hip hop is very misunderstood. I think it's often seen as something that is incredibly easy to just pick up, but it's not. Um, it does require, if, at least if you want to do it competitively, it does require training. But I think in the general sense, the concept of hip hop is just togetherness and bringing people together under a banner. Not everyone signs up for the hip hop club to get a trophy and recognition. Some students, like Inga, just signed up to loosen up. Hi, my name is Inga Goa. I'm from Johannesburg and I'm studying BA Law. I joined Dance Sport because I just wanted to try something new. And I thought, you know, dancing would be a really good start since, you know, we do it like almost all the time and yeah. Um, I was pretty nervous, not gonna lie to you. I mean, I'd never danced like professionally before and I was expecting like so many like, you know, professionals. So to like see that it was just all calm vibes, it was quite nice. Through the journey that we've taken with some of the members of the Hip Hop Club, we've learned that beauty, diversity and talent lies within the aerobics hall. So whether you're doing this for recognition or just for fun, this can be the home for you. The Rhodes University rugby team finally took a win against FNB TUT at the Varsity Shield Games. Finally! Oh, Oetu Mabaso brings us some of the sports news. Over to you, Oetu. Thank you, Tato. Today, for Sports Talk, we will be talking to Lozzi after winning the Man of the Match Award against TUT at the Rhodes University Rugby Game. Thank you, Lozzi. So, how does it feel winning the Man of, Ma Man of the Match Award? Uh, it's a huge privilege and honor to win the Man of the Match Award, in, uh, especially in such a, a big game like that, the TUT game. If we didn't win that game, we'd get relegated. So, it's a huge honor and privilege to win that award. So, I want to say thank you to my teammates, my family, my coaches, uh, and to God. How do you want to improve as a rugby player yourself, a person? Uh, uh, for, the position, for the position that I play prop, I feel like scrumming is very important. So I'd like to uh, improve on my scrumming. So therefore we can convert those uh, into points and uh, hopefully into wins. How does your rugby team feel the season has gone as a whole? Do you guys have any improvements that you want to do? Uh, there's a lot of things to improve on, but there's also a lot of things that we've improved. So um, going into next season, we're just trying to improve and get better. But this season was quite a, it was quite a up and down season. But um, there was a lot of positives to take out, and that's all we're trying to focus on now. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Back to you guys in the studio. Many businesses had to shut down at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dees Naidu was one of the people to lose their businesses, but has somehow managed to revive his business by selling Durban-inspired home-cooked meals. 
I'm currently standing on High Street in front of what used to be known as Cafe Delizia. Previous owner Dees Naidu tells us what happened throughout the pandemic and what he's doing now to survive. Dees Naidu had bought Cafe Delizia as a successful establishment in February 2020, just before the lockdown started. He had tried to desperately keep the business afloat. However, the second wave had brought more issues for Delizia as the country shut down again. I moved to Gramstown in 2002. I retired at the end of 2019. Well, uh, being alone in Gramstown, I decided that I'd venture into a restaurant business because uh, I love that industry. I love cooking and I love food. Yeah, well, that's kind of yeah. going to do that. Garlic. And uh, so I, the opportunity arose for me to buy Cafe Delicia. And I decided to buy it for my retirement and enjoy running it. And then the pandemic hit the world on the 5th of March. Dees had said that he had no support whatsoever during this period. And after the third wave, he decided to close down the business. Dee's main source of income was gone. Other business owners struggled, like Mike, the current owner of Slipstream Sports Bar, who receives a lot of revenue from physical events. During the lockdown, Mike shared that he had to close the bar for a long time. Zero turnover. But he had received some grace during this period. Mike was one of the lucky few business owners to receive help during these tough times. I actually, yes, I did have some support from my daughter who works in China. We also spoke to Tina, who currently works at the Rats and Parrot. Tina was not able to procure a job for herself during the lockdown period, and this was difficult for her. So she resorted to selling handmade masks to get by. A number of people actually wanted jobs, you know, and so now competition was steep and um, it was just very difficult to actually have companies actually give your CV a chance. Dees, like Tina, has also decided to start his own business to make ends meet. Okay. I love cooking. Those are my skills. So I decided to start cooking at home and supplying people. Yeah, Mainly Durban style food curries uh, at, to, through uh, 10 Cross Street. The business takes pride in its authentic Durban based flavor, which Dee says he uses Durban vegetables and recipes for. The secret to Durban curries is the specially mixed spices, which Dee's gets especially from Durban. That looks good. That looks great. Every Friday, Dee says he takes his orders for chicken and lamb curry, which he also delivers. This is a hopeful rebirth for Dee's Naidu and a message to aspiring business owners like him to persevere even through the toughest of times. Real curry products can be found here at the 10 Cross Shop on Cross Street. Yifti Misa, Rhodes University, Makanda. And if you're a lover of Durban food, then make sure to visit Dee's. That's exactly what we're going to do. That's all from us, the region. Have an amazing night.